to the page setter tutorial is a continuation uh class actually before now i was on live on facebook uh teaching differentiation i started two days ago and i was i was explaining a limit of function on omarewa yomi uh, facebook page and i also explained um differentiation by first principle i don't justice to that i explain how first principle can be used to find sine x it can also be used to find s raised to power three it can be used to find s raised to power half with the knowledge of binomial expansion and now i'm on youtube live and i'm going to continue but before then this morning or just a while ago I was also explaining differentiation by product rule and by quotient tool that are done on Facebook Live. And here on YouTube Live, uh, we'll be explaining differentiation by function of function, also known as chain rule, also known as composite function, function of function, which is known as chain rule function of a function what do you understand by that let's say for example you have this this is a function now okay here is a function f and this function now is carrying another function in other words another function is embedded inside this in the in the in sets we call it subset and superset we call it subset universal set Okay, so this is the bigger set now, and then this is a subset inside. So that's like function of a function. It could also be represented like this. You could also have it like this. Um, for example, here you have y is equal to f of t, and x is equal to g of t. When you have a situation like this, how do you explain? How do you, how do you explain it? Very simple. So you have dy dx. It's just simply going to give you dy dt times dt dx. Okay. So you, you have a situation like this. So that's what we're saying. It can also be represented. And then you have dy dx is equal to dy du and then dot du dx so you have this this way so whichever way provided what you have here are similar just like what we have here is similar okay so it's important you understand this now we have a situation where a question like this is given fine the dy the dx of 2x squared raised to power 10 or raised to power of 30. Now, when I was doing product rule, when I was doing product rule, you may want to like, ah, but sir, I can use product rule to destroy this question, to solve this question. You may not be able. The reason is, the expression here is raised to power of 30. Are you going to expand? You, you you mean you won't even have the patience to expand the raised to the power of 30. This is why the rule that can help you out to solve this question is chain rule, which is functional function. So to solve this question, I'll simply say, so y is equal to 2 raised to the power 2 all 10, then 30 here. Now there are two uh methods that we use: long cut and short cut. So let you, okay, be equals to this. So you have this now. And then my y, therefore, is equals to you raised to power of 30. You see now? Let you be equals to this, and then my y is there. I'm going to differentiate you with respect to x, and then I'm going to differentiate y with respect to you. So differentiating you with respect to x, I will have du dx is equal to 4x. When you differentiate 10, that's 0. 
and then I'll come here, dy dx. This is 30, and then you have 29. Okay, remember we're talking about chain rule now. So my dy dx is equal to dy du times du dx. So dy du is 30 u raised to power 29. du dx is 4x. When you multiply this by this, you have 120 u 29x. The question is, what's u? You go back to the question. So 120, the u there is 2x squared, 10, all raised to power 29. And then let's put our x here. This is our final answer. Look at where we're coming from. So we said that u should be equal to this. We differentiated u with respect to x. And then we differentiated y with respect to u. And then we brought in the formula that says the y dx is the y du dot du dx. And then we have this. This is quite simple and it's also straightforward. Okay. I'm sure that's very clear. Now, I will quickly solve more questions. But before then, let me show you a shortcut for our jam bites, our jam students and students all over the world. Oh, you're looking at a question like this for shortcut DYDS, bring 30 down, do not differentiate what is inside. Bring the 30, bring it down, do not differentiate what is inside. And then the 30 minus 1 from our general formula, that's 29. Then differentiate what is inside now. That's 4x. And that is all. We got the same thing. You could see now this is quicker, this is faster. Okay, but... If it's a theory question, you'll be expected to show your work. Hence, you are expected to know the two methods. Number two question. If y is equal to sine 8x squared plus 1, find gy dx. So, solution, look at this question now. Y is equal to 2 sine bracket S cubed 8S squared plus 1. I'll say again, let U be equal to 2 this plus 1. And let my Y be equal to 2 sine U. So I'll differentiate you with respect to x to du dx. Differentiate it. That gives you three what s squared. Differentiate it comes down. Then you have 16x. When you differentiate a constant, that's zero. Okay. In case you are just coming to my channel, um the class I've started actually before now so you can check my other videos up so you have this then dy du this will give you two cos u when you differentiate sign you have cos so my dy dx is equal to my dy du dot my du dx my dy du is 2 cos u. My du dx is 3s squared minus 16x. So you have 2 cos. The question is, what's my u? 
my u is 3x cubed 8x squared plus 1 and then 3x squared this that's it that's it so you have that Do you see what happened now? Very simple and very straightforward. If you have any question, you should be able to let me know. So you don't need to expand this, just leave it the way it is that way, and then you'll be fine. You have a uh, number three question this way. Let's assume the question is written like this. Now this is squared. So this is the same thing as if I'm using shortcut, I told you of shortcuts. Shortcut, let the one over two comes down, and then you have s squared, then minus one, that is half minus one, then differentiate, which is two x. So my dy dx, this will cancel this. So you have s squared one minus half. And this will give you, what will this give you please? This will give you one over, let me write it this way, s squared minus one half, which is the same as one square root of s squared minus one. So I use shortcuts anyway. A short code. So if I was to use long codes, I would say let u be equals to s square. And then my y therefore becomes this. Then I will differentiate u with respect to this, this with respect to u, and then I will do exactly. Okay. So dy du, you have this. And then you can now bring it together since um, I solved it in that manner. So bringing it together, you have dy dx equals to dy du dot du dx. So dy du is half u minus 2 du dx is 2x, this go and this go. And so you have, uh, what do you have now? You have u have multiplied by x, which will give you, um, oh, I threw away this. <laughs> I just saw it now. So which will be x? Which will be x? I cancelled and I left it here. I just saw it here now. So that's that's quite beautiful. Thank God that I was using this method. So I had to detect the error quickly. So now the u there, you go back to the question, that's x square one, and then you have half um, times x. This is times place, times x. So we now have x over x square one, all half, therefore is equal to x square one, so we got the same thing. So it's still the same thing. Just the same way, the same solving. Okay. So I'm going to give you questions to solve. And then you to the same solution if possible. And then if you have issue with it, you can also ask questions.
So looking at these three questions, you can now attempt them yourself and see what you'll come out of them, what you'll come out of the question, what will come out of it. So attempt them yourself. And that will take me to implicit. That will take me to implicit. Implicit. Okay? I'm sure is you getting what I'm doing. So implicit function. Now, <laughs> you need to first understand what an implicit function is here. Yeah? Something like this. Something like this. You, you can see here, all the math you've been doing prior to this time are referred to as explicit function. Okay, all the math you've been doing prior to this time are referred to as explicit function, okay? So uh, we have a situation where the function is independent of y variable and sometimes is dependent on the y variable. But a situation like this, where the value of x or y cannot be explicitly defined, okay, whenever the value of x or y cannot be explicitly defined, in this case now, x cannot be explicitly defined, neither can y be explicitly defined. We call such an expression implicit function. We call such an expression implicit function so this is an implicit function okay so let's start with a basic thing that you need to know uh we just put some questions on the board so find differentiate the following Okay, that third question is enough. So I'm going to solve, I'm going to solve either question one, I will solve question one and question two, or question one and question three, and I will stop there. Okay, solution. So we have S squared plus Y squared equals to 25. Now, what's step one? Step one, apply DDX to, to both sides. Apply DDX to both sides. Okay, so open it up with DDX. That's step number one. Apply the dx to both sides. Step number two, then we want to now go ahead and differentiate. 
So you're differentiating the ds with respect to x. That will give you your normal 2x. But if you're differentiating the ds, the, the d operator with respect to y square, that's going to give you 2y dy ds. It will switch because there's no compatibility. So it's not going to give you <coughs> just 2y, excuse me, without attaching the y dx to it. So we come to the to this, differentiate this, you have zero. So I'm looking for the y dx. So we'll call it like terms. Therefore, my dy dx is minus two dx over two y. So the answer is this over this. <laughs> yes. So that's how to solve an inflexate function. Let me solve number two and then we'll stop. Let me solve number two. Uh, it's important you, let me add something to number two that's a little bit interesting. Okay, yeah. Yes, I think that's fine. So here you have, You have this. Now you want to differentiate this. The step one I told you was this. We can do the same thing here. So apply the dx to both sides. Apply it to both sides. Okay, so the next thing you need to be very careful of is that there are two entities here <laughs> that's x variable and y variable, and that shows that we're going to apply product rule. Yes, when you have a situation here now, it's product two. Here is product two. So your u is s square, your v is y y square, your u is three s square, your y is y cube. Here, my u is s square. My u is 2s squared, rather. My y is this. Here, your u is s squared. Here, your u is 3s squared. Okay, take note of that, please. So, my u here is, um, look at product 2. Let me put it in the corner of the board. So, for those who are just, who did not take part in my product 2 class. So, that's what I'm applying here. So, applying that now, u, keep my u constant which is this. So this is my u, this is my v. This is the u, this is the v. So keep u constant, differentiate v. When you differentiate y with respect to dx, what do you have? You have one dy dx, so no need of writing one. So just y dy dx. And then plus, which is a product to keep your y constant, differentiate to a square, that gives you 4x. And then we come to this now, minus, differentiate this. This will give you 6x, that's this. Then differentiate this with respect to y. Again, it will give you 3y squared and then dy dA. I'm sure you are not getting it, that whenever you are differentiating with this, y with respect to this one, it's going to give you the value and then you attach the y dx beside it in the d operator, okay? So you attach it to it like that. So you have two s square dy dx four x y six x three y square dy dx so we have two y square dy dx plus three y square dy dx 
plus 4xy minus 6xy. Then when you differentiate, oh, I didn't do this. When you differentiate 10, you have 0. So you have 0 here. So yeah, we have factorize the y dx out. Take this to the other side. So six x minus four x. Yes. So make the y dx subject of formula. That gives you six x four x y over 2s square 3y square <laughs> that's the final answer let me explain this again as we close this is the question given and then i said apply the dx to both sides which i did exactly here and then i applied product two for this and this is a product two I kept you constant, I differentiated y, and that gave me dy dx, look at it here, and then, so, that gave me one dy dx, but no need of writing one, then you have plus, you have plus, and I kept you, v constant, differentiated you, that's 4x, then minus 3 here, if I differentiate minus 3x square here, that will give me minus 6x square, then if I differentiate, y cube here it will give me three y square the y dx and i collected light term i collected light term i collected light term here and then i factorized the y dx since it's common then i brought this here it's minus here it became plus here it's plus here it became minus here and then i made the y dx subject of formula and so you have this so this brings us to the end of the class. God bless you. Bye.